Well, I think they're all special. And any time you can make it to a cup final, you know, I think it's a it's a proud moment, a a, a great moment, a, a you know a, a nice moment for the organization, for the players, and all that. But you mentioned, is it a little different? And yes, it is. <laughs> You know, it's miles difference. Number one, we're not playing Toronto. Uh, number two, obviously the COVID situation in this country certainly has, you know, thrown everyday Americans for a loop. You know, a lot of people have lost jobs, lost, lost lives. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a sad story in a lot of different ways. And, you know, for the players on both teams, you know, organizations across MLS and other pro sports, you know, it's been a really challenging year. So obviously the difference of not being able to play in front of a packed map free stadium, I'm sure everybody would have been there. I know that our fans, we have a large uh, contingent of traveling fans that always follow us wherever we may go. And I think that is going to be missing from the atmosphere. I know they'll be in here but normally they'd like to be here in all the away games. So it's certainly a different circumstance, a different, you know, different uh, MLS Cup, but it is MLS Cup and it's special in many ways. Thank you, Coach. All right, we'll jump into the Q&A. Uh, we have quite a few hands, so we hope to get through to all of you. The first three will go to Data Evans, Tyler Fisher, and Jackson Phelps. Data? Thank you. Hi, Brian. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, what's your level of concern given Columbus's uh, COVID outbreak, and is there a chance that uh, Jordan Morris doesn't play out of an abundance of caution due to his being tested? No, I, I'm fully confident in the protocols that MLS and Jada, more importantly, our club has done over the course of this very challenging time. Uh, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know all of the details and all of the, you know, facts when it relates to COVID transmission, but I personally feel safe. And I know Jordan is anxious to play in the game. So I fully expect him to be participating in the match. Thanks, Coach. Next uh, question, Tyler Fisher. Hey, Brian, can you hear me really quick? Yep, I can hear you. Sweet. Um, just uh, wanted to know your plans on if you had to switch up any um, game plans regarding Darlington Nagby and Pedro Santos being out for Columbus. Was it uh, a hard situation for you to kind of regroup the guys, or was it uh, just plain and simple? Uh, soccer is a team sport. Those are two super talented players, but Caleb is going to put two other talented players on the field in their place. Uh, he still has the advantage of being at home. Uh, you know, there is, there is nothing that I would prepare differently because we prepared for a very good opponent for many different ways, how they play, all of that sort of stuff. And again, you know, it, it's sad that those guys cannot feature in the match. We certainly will try and take advantage of that wherever we can. But it's not like we are going to change drastically what we do. I mean, we are who we are at this point in the season. I think we've had a very successful run here in the playoffs. And again, we're going to try and dictate, try and dictate tempo, try and do the things we want to do in order to win the game. Thanks, Coach. Next question, Jackson Paul. Hi, Coach. Uh, I'm wondering if I could get your thoughts on, on Darlington Nagby and the difference he's made in facing him with Columbus and with Portland over the years and what he does on the field that makes it that have, has made it so hard on your teams over the years. Well, he's gotten better with age. I mean, he was already a tremendous player coming out of Akron. I remember Ezra Hendrickson, who's now a coach here in Columbus, he loved Nagby when he was coming out of college. We were anxious to try and draft him and get him or somehow you know uh, get him on our squad for many different times uh, but he's you know transformed himself into one of the best 
you know, holding midfielders. You know, they play with two back there like us, four, two, three, one. And his skill set is, you know, super technically. Uh, it's hard to get the ball off him. He can dribble forward and be dangerous. Uh, he's got good range. Uh, he's, you know, aggressive when he defends set pieces. I mean, there's a lot of lot of good things, a lot of nuances to his game that's made him one of the best players in MLS. Coach, the next two go to Felipe Cardenas and Jeremiah Oshin. Felipe? Thank you. Hi, Coach. Felipe Cardenas with The Athletic. How are you? Good. Very good. Uh, I want to ask you about, about Nico. Um, I mean, clearly one of the top players this season. He's shown that throughout his career here in MLS. I'm just wondering if there's been any added pressure on him from a personal standpoint just to deliver for this team, to get this team back to the top. Um, in my personal opinion, it seemed like he, even though he's playing well, he has been pressing at times in games, but he does deliver in the end. So what is your take on that? Well, I would tell you that, that Nico, you know, his, the standard that Nico sets for himself is very high, the bar he sets. The kid wants to win. I mean, he wants to win everything in training, uh, in games, obviously. You know, when you, you might see Felipe, him pressing, you know, I'll give you one analogy. So what you guys might think is pressing, let's just say he has 10 forward passes. And the 10 forward passes, you know, maybe eight of them don't result in a shot on goal or a goal or something that's that that works well to me and to nico that's okay because if you don't try those passes if you don't try and play if you don't try and get jordan morris in on goal then you never know if the goal is going to get scored and so when some people see him pressing i would say okay yeah okay there's times when maybe he makes a bad pass but everybody does what i would say is nico has the right mindset because how do you win? Everybody wants to win, but it's the how. It's all the details. How do you make how do you make your team successful? And so, you know, the team around Nico helps him. You know, if I go back to the various teams, I mean, Ozzy was a big influence. You know, when back in 2016, you know, Ozzy was able to kind of help Nico control tempo when he first got here. This year, it's JP. JP has come here and tried to you know, help and give us a little bit more possession in the middle part of the field. So it's not just a one-man show. Nico certainly is a very driven individual, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff about why he was left off a top, top 25 list and other things and other accolades that he would probably just push to the side and say, you know what, I want to win, and I want to win so badly because of my teammates, because of the players that I play with. That's his true motivation. Thanks, Coach. Next two questions, Jeremiah Ocean, and followed by Ryan Holm. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Gio Paolo and, and some of the influences that he's had and the way that Nico plays. Uh, what what ways have those, like how would you articulate Gio Paolo's influence on the team and what kind of things has he allowed you to do differently? Well, he's a he's a connector that allows Nico to stay higher up the field. I think to the previous point, Felipe, I mean, he's got a point. Sometimes if Nico would get frustrated, he might try and drop back to find the ball more. Well, now he doesn't have to do that as often just because JP is a good provider. JP is a kind of connection between the back four and Nico or Raul. And so that has helped us in how we play. Uh, next to Ryan Tolmich, followed by Alex Kemner. Ryan? Hey, Coach. Uh, Ryan Tolmich from Goal. Um, obviously, you know, you've talked about Darlington and Pedro, and, and there's no one who would say that the crew are better off without them. And it, it, it's tough to overcome the loss of good players like that. But looking back at 2016, that, that's something that you guys had to do with a little bit more of a run will go on. How did you guys kind of manage that? Obviously, like, it wasn't for one game, a little bit of a run-up, but how did you manage that? And now that you're on the other side of it, how do you kind of manage knowing that they're going to be able to use that as motivation? You're talking about in 2016 when Clint went down? With Clint, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, 
That's why soccer is a team sport. And that's why teams still can have success when they lose certain key players. I mean, it, it, it's a bummer for sure for Columbus. I mean, I get it. But again, our message is going to be let's not let complacency or, okay, so Darlington Nagyby is not going to play, so this is going to be an easy game. That, that doesn't come into any of our messaging or any of the mentality of that group out there. We're too smart for that. We understand that. And so this is a one-off cup final. I think we all know what's at stake. And the only preparation that we are going to do, games tomorrow, is just today to have our last training session of the year, much like we do on a normal match day minus one, and just get the guys prepared for whoever Columbus puts out on the field. Because look, maybe Darlington was available for the game and then he pulled a lame with an injury. What are you going to do then? I mean, that's just part of the sport. So we'll, 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 we'll try and minimize that. I know it's a big news story out in the press. But again, Caleb's a good coach. He's got a good team. He'll have his team ready. Thank you, Coach. Uh, the last two will go to Alex Kaminer, followed by Bramon Bates. Alex? Thank you. Hi, Coach. How are you? Good. I would like, good, good. I would like to ask you how is Javier Arriaga for this game. Uh, I ask you this because it's the second final with the team. Thank you. Uh, Javier is in Seattle awaiting the birth of his child. And so he will not be here unless, you know, his baby is born healthy and everything and we can get him here somehow by a miracle before the game. Uh, but he is expecting his first child. It's a wonderful event when you have children. Uh, and so we let him stay there with his wife, you know, when when players come to this country and they're, you know, by themselves. I know he has some help there in Seattle. but. You know, it's a challenging thing sometimes. So we are very pleased for Javier, and he's an important member of our team. And I know he will be with us in spirit. And coach, in the last uh, question, we'll go to Thank you. Hi, coach. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Okay, that's fine. So the question for you is, uh, how have you seen the performance of Raul Ruiz in the last game, but not only in the last game, but on all this season? Thank you. So uh, thank you for that last easy question. I love talking about Raul. Uh, he is a tremendous goal scorer. Uh, everybody can see the statistics and see how many goals he scored in the playoffs, all the important goals he scored in the playoffs. But what always amazes me, and why all of the players on the, on the team love Raul, is because, okay, he's a good guy, nice guy, he laughs, he's friendly, he gets along with everyone. But he does some of the small things, some of the small details that help the team win, not just scoring goals. His possession, his movement, his initial defending. You know, he's the first guy when we defend in our 4 2 3 1. He's, he's here. And so he has a very important role on how we start our defending tactics. And he does all of that with, you know, the enthusiasm. Even though there's sometimes goal scorers don't like to defend, Raul knows and understands his role. And so I am very blessed to have a guy who is willing to help the team do the little things to help the team win. But then he's also just such a tremendous goal scorer. You know, I mean, the goal the other night, it was, it was perfect. I mean, he knows exactly where to float. Ball comes to him, and he's going to make sure that he scores that goal that helps us win a very challenging game against Minnesota.